Hi, my name is Dr. Jay Desai and I welcome you all to my YouTube channel Explore Material and Metallurgy with Dr. Jay Desai. In today's video, I am talking about nano indentation, that is indenting on the nanoscale. The topics of today's video are meaning and usefulness of measuring hardness, that is what is hardness and why measuring hardness is important. The conventional indentation routes, challenges with conventional routes, need for nano indentation, information that can be obtained or derived from nano indentation and towards the end of the video, I will also share my nano indentation results and analysis. So please watch the video till the end. So the first question which comes to mind is what is hardness? So hardness is the ability of a material to resist external forces. If a material is subjected to any kind of external force, then it is a tendency of a material to resist that external force. And that tendency or that ability is what we call as hardness. It helps us in determining the application of material for practical purposes. So we can figure out where we can use a particular material based on its hardness measurement. When we talk about material science or in the field of material science, we usually imply hardness as resistance of a material to localized deformation. Now this localized deformation, it may be due to indentation, it may be due to scratching, it may be due to cutting or it may be due to bending. So why do we need or what is the usefulness of measuring hardness? So when we measure hardness, we can check the quality of the material we can understand the structural integrity of the material and we can also determine the material's functional and optimal working range and environment. So that is why the measurement of hardness is very useful. Now, there were different conventional indentation routes which are used today and it has, it has been used uh, since long time that is Vickers hardness, Noop hardness, Rockwell hardness, and so on. And these conventional indentation routes, they were used or they are currently used to determine the hardness and other mechanical properties of the material. In this, what we do is we have a hard tip, which is usually diamond, and whose mechanical properties are known. And we press this hard tip into a sample whose properties are unknown. And as the tip penetrates into the specimen, the load placed on it is also increased till it reaches the user-defined value. And when we do this experiment, we get the area of residual indentation, that is A, and we can calculate the hardness based on the area of residual indentation and the maximum load which is specified by the user. So hardness can be determined using the formula P max by A. But there were problems with the conventional route. They were very good or they worked well for thick homogeneous samples, but for thin coatings or for materials with very low thickness, they failed because thin materials or coatings with low thickness, they were not able to accept large loads. And the application of large loads was not possible. So it was very hard or almost uh, impossible to determine the thickness of thin films or coatings using the conventional route. And a need was felt for nano indentation to minimize the applied load and the overall area of indentation so that we can 
calculate the thickness of thin films and coating and we can resolve the issue which was there with the conventional rub and also the need was felt to promote scientific advancement and this led to the development of nano indentation technique in the mid 1970s this nano indentation technique it improved on the conventional macro and micro indentation test here what we did was the indentation it was there on the nano scale and since the indentation was there on the nano scale a very precise tip that is usually a burkowitz tip was used and we got real time load displacement measurement and since small load and small tip sizes were used the net indentation area was in nanometer square and because of this we were able to calculate the hardness and other mechanical properties of a material with very low thickness or of coating with a very low thickness and this was the significance of nano indentation so what all information we can derive or what all information we obtain from nano indentation so the first information that we directly obtain when we perform the nano indentation experiment is load displacement curve that is with the increase of load how much the tip is going inside the sample that we can figure out when we perform the nano indentation experiment second is the hardness that is maximum load divided by residual indentation area so when we divide the maximum load that is specified by us when we perform the nano indentation experiment by the overall residual indentation area we get the hardness of the material or we can calculate the hardness of the material the third thing which we can calculate from nano indentation is the load rate and equivalent strain rate so load rate is load per second how much load we are applying per second and equivalent strain rate is the rate of change in strain or deformation of a material with respect to time so the equivalent strain rate is given by loading rate by 2p the fourth parameter that we can uh, calculate from our nano indentation experiment is strain rate sensitivity exponent it is the material resistance to prevent necking during deformation suppose we have a material and it is undergoing some kind of deformation so what is the resistance of that particular material to the necking that is what we mean by the strain rate sensitivity exponent and it is given by the slope of hardness versus equivalent strain rate plotted on a log log scale so m equals to del log h by del log strain rate the fifth information which we can derive or which we can calculate from nano indentation is activation volume that is volume swept by dislocations during plastic deformation and this activation volume is inversely proportional to the strain rate sensitivity exponent so we can calculate the activity volume by v equals to 0 3 kt del ln strain rate by del h and this strain rate sensitivity exponent and the activation volume it can help us in determining the possible deformation mechanism or the mechanism by which a material is undergoing deformation and that is why the strain rate sensitivity exponent and activation volume plays a very important role when we perform our nano indentation experiment when i perform my nano indentation experiment i use nickel with varying iron concentration of 0 18% 28% and 43% and i use hydrotron tn950 tribo indenter with a burkowitz diamond indenter with a tip radius of 100 nanometer and i carried out my experiment on a load control mode with a maximum load of 200 mN and i varied 
the loading rate that is 1 milli newton per second 10 milli newton per second and 20 milli newton per second so these were my parameters for performing my nano indentation experiment now the first thing which i got was the load depth curve so here you can see this is a, this is load and this is depth and i could uh, calculate or i could analyze the load depth curves of different alloys that is nickel 0.8% iron nickel 18.5% iron, nickel 28.5% iron, and nickel 43.5% iron. You can use it for your own alloy. And you can compare the load depth curves of different alloys. And you can comment on why it is happening or why you are getting the data which you are getting from the nano indentation experiment. So the first thing which I got was load depth curve. Second is the hardness, which is the maximum load divided by residual indentation area. So you can compare and you can analyze the different hardness of different alloys using the nano indentation experiment. Third is the equivalent strain rate. So you can also comment on the equivalent strain rate for different alloys of, or for different materials of different compositions. And you can compare their uh, behavior and the fourth and the fifth one was the strain rate sensitivity exponent and the activation volume the strain rate sensitivity exponent was calculated by m equals to del log h by del log strain rate and activation volume was calculated by 3 root 3 kt del ln strain rate by del h the strain rate sensitivity exponent and the activation volume can help you figure out what are the possible mechanism by which the deformation is occurring in your material? So this is it for nano indentation. And uh, these are my differences. The, there is one publication which I published, which was on effect of iron alloying in the evolution of nanostructure and microstructure stability in nickel, which you can go through if you want to learn more about nano indentation. Also, I published an article on nano indentation that is nano indentation cutting edge hardness measurement for advanced materials um, in a platform called MacMatch, which you can go through to learn more about nano indentation. And uh, for those who don't know MacMatch, MacMatch is a material search platform that connects engineers, product designers, and procurement teams with best materials and suppliers for the job. Here you can search and compare materials with specific properties and you can decide the materials based on your particular application. It's a good platform to interact with community of experts and share your projects and suggestions. So this is how this is how their website looks like. And you can also find the metal suppliers. And that is it for today's video. To watch more videos and to support my work, please tap the bell icon to stay up to date with the channel and subscribe to see the videos as soon as they are uploaded. And if you find this video useful, insightful, and if there are possible collaboration opportunities, you can reach out to me on my LinkedIn page uh, via email or by commenting on the YouTube video. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.